Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. In today's video, we're going to investigate PCI Express performance using a range of graphics cards, CPUs, platforms, games, and resolutions. And I'm doing this because I saw a few interesting claims that were made by viewers on last week's video titled AMD or Intel for RTX 3080 benchmarking and how important is PCIe 4.0. Now, the primary goal of that video was to look at what kind of performance difference we'd see between AMD's Ryzen 9 3950X and Intel's Core i9 10900K when testing high-end GPUs. And what I found was when using the RTX 2080 Ti, the fastest GeForce GPU currently available, there was virtually no difference between the 3950X and 10900K at 4K. And in fact, if anything, AMD appeared to have a very slight performance advantage. Then at 1440p, the 3950X was just 2% slower on average. So again, we're pretty much looking at identical performance. And this means when testing high-end GPUs at resolutions gamers are most likely gonna be using, performance will almost always be GPU limited. That being the case, overall performance will not be affected by either processor. And that means stuff like cost per frame also won't be influenced. And therefore I concluded by saying it really shouldn't matter if reviewers use the 3950X or the 10900K for testing the upcoming next gen GPUs. Typically I just use the 10900K as it is faster at 1080p if only by a small margin. However, next gen GPUs will support PCIe 4.0 and currently only AMD processors support that version. I also noted that testing with third gen Ryzen might make sense given that the bulk of our audience is now using Ryzen and it's not just our audience, but the entire PC enthusiast community. Anyway, the bulk of you who voted on our poll wanted to see priority given to the 3950X and that's what we're gonna do. So that's settled at this point, but there is something else I wanna look at a little more closely now and that's PCI Express performance. I was surprised to see how many people were claiming next-gen GPUs won't take advantage of PCIe 4.0 because the RTX 2080 Ti doesn't even need PCIe 3.0 times 16 bandwidth, claiming it's only about 2% slower using an eight times connection. I did find all this quite interesting, so I decided to take a closer look. Now, I should preface this testing by saying, I'm not expecting PCIe 4.0 to make a big difference with next-gen GPUs. I'm honestly not sure what to expect, but I do know they will support PCIe 4.0, and if it offers even a 5% performance boost, it will be well worth testing with the 3950X. But let's get back to these RTX 2080 Ti claims, as I find them very interesting. About four years ago now, I looked at how PCI Express bandwidth influences performance with the GTX 1070, GTX 1080, and Titan X. For the most part, I saw little to no difference in performance between PCIe 3.0 times 16 and 8, though admittedly the testing was very limited. Out of interest, I retested the GTX 1080 in four modern games on our Core i9 10900K test system and found no difference between the two PCIe modes in F1 2020, Death Stranding, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. However, I did quite surprisingly find a difference in Horizon Zero Dawn, where X16 was up to 7% faster seen at 1080p and then 4% faster at 1440p. Now, you could claim, as I've seen many do, that this game is broken and that's why it uses so much PCIe bandwidth. And maybe you're right, but Tim and myself feel that's probably not gonna be the case. It's more likely to be something like the game doing additional post-processing on the CPU, and that means the final rendered image might be moved across the bus. It's impossible for us to say exactly what's going on here. All we can show you for certain is how it impacts performance. But this is clear evidence that games evolve and their bandwidth demands increase. So it's possible that GPUs, which were once thought to be well within the limits of their PCIe spec, may no longer be. Although I never tested PCIe bandwidth performance with the RTX 2080 Ti, there are a few tests you can find online, though the results show little to no difference between PCIe 3.0 times 8 and times 16, which is probably why we saw so many comments claiming no difference or at most a 2% difference. But keep in mind these tests were conducted about two years ago now when the 2080 Ti was the shiny new exciting thing to play around with. Since then though, a number of new and highly demanding games have been released. So let's do some updated testing. Again, I'll be using our Core i9 10900K test system and I'll be switching between the Times 8 and Times 16 modes in the BIOS. Starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see a very minor performance difference between the two models. Depending on the resolution, we're looking at a two to 3% difference in performance, which is in line with many of the claims we've seen from viewers. Moving on to testing with Resident Evil 3, and here we see absolutely no difference in performance between PCIe 3.0 times 8 and times 16. Identical frame rates were seen at all three resolutions, so not much else to say here. 
Another game to show absolutely no difference in performance between the two PCIe modes was Gears 5. Again, identical frame rates were seen at all three tested resolutions. Okay, so this is quite interesting. Testing with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, we see up to a 12% increase in performance for the average frame rate and a 16% boost to 1% low performance at 1080p. Now those margins are reduced at 1440p. Here the Time 16 mode boosted the average frame rate by 7% and then we see virtually no improvement at 4K. The fact that we are seeing the biggest improvement at 1080p, which is to be expected, but it is interesting when you consider the battle between the 10900K and the 3950X. Anyway, moving on, we're now seeing a 5 to 7% performance uplift with the Time 16 mode at 1080p and 1440p in F1 2020 with no change at 4K. Certainly not massive performance gains with the higher bandwidth interface, but it does make me wonder what scaling with PCIe 4.0 times 16 would look like, assuming the 2080 Ti actually supported it. Testing with Wolfenstein Youngblood sees a 7 to 8% performance uplift when using PCIe 3.0 times 16 over times 8. Again, not a massive difference, but if the 10900K was hypothetically limited to 8 times, while the 3950X could run at 16 times, that difference would actually see the AMD processor faster at 1080p. Of course, that's not actually the case. I'm just thinking a little bit forward, sort of guessing at what things might look like with a much faster PCIe 4.0 graphics card. Death Stranding is a new AAA title with breathtaking visuals, and here we're seeing a 6% increase in average frame rate performance at 1080p with a 12% boost to the 1% low. That is quite a substantial performance uptick, though the margin is reduced at 1440p and almost entirely eliminated at 4K. Finally, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, and here we're seeing a 7 to 8% performance boost at 1080p and 1440p when running the RTX 2080 Ti in the Time 16 mode, while there is a small performance gain at 4K. So, in reality, the Horizon Zero Dawn results really aren't out of line with what we've seen in titles such as Death Stranding and Wolfenstein Youngblood, for example. Well, those 2080 Ti results certainly were interesting, and I have some even more interesting GeForce results to look at in a moment. But before we do, here's another heavily requested test that I've included as a bonus, the Radeon RX 5700 XT with the Ryzen 9 3950X, tested using both PCIe 3.0 x 16 and PCIe 4.0 x 16. Unfortunately, I've had to skip the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results because for whatever reason, the game started crashing on the 5700 XT halfway through my testing. The issue was limited to just this game. In fact, the game itself actually ran perfectly fine, no dramas at all. I just couldn't enter the display and graphics menu. The game would lock up and then just crash the desktop upon trying to enter that menu. I spent a hell of a lot of time trying everything I could, couldn't get it to work, so I'm not sure what's going on there. It's very annoying, but anyway, as I said, we'll just have to skip that one for now. So moving on to Resident Evil 3, here we see once again that PCIe bandwidth has no impact on performance in this title. The same is also true for Gears 5, though we did see a small improvement to the 1% low performance at 1080p using the newer PCIe 4.0 version, but overall performance was much the same. We also see no change in performance with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, as using either PCI Express version results in the same level of performance across the board. Now, this is interesting. We do see a very small performance uptick when using PCIe 4.0 with the 5700 XT. Up to a 5% performance boost can be seen at 1080p. We also see a performance boost when testing with Wolfenstein Youngblood, though only to the 1% low figure, which was increased by as much as 13%, seen at 1440p. And I should emphasize that this data is based on a three run average. We're also seeing a 4-5% to performance boost in Death Stranding, which probably isn't something you'd expect to see with a current generation mid-range GPU. That being the case, it is interesting to consider that the next gen flagship GPUs could be 60% faster than the 5700 XT, or perhaps even more, so it's going to be very interesting revisiting these tests with those upcoming models. Then finally, the last 5700 XT test has been conducted with Horizon Zero Dawn, and here we're seeing a very small performance improvement at 1440p and 1080p using PCI Express 4.0. So we just saw a few instances where PCI Express 4.0 boosted the Radeon GPU's performance by 4 to 5%, and even an example of double digit gains and we're only talking about the 5700 XT here. So you've got to imagine, if the 5700 XT was 60, 70, maybe even 80% faster, then those margins would grow considerably. And to give us some idea of what we could be in for, here's a look at PCI Express 3.0 scaling with a range of GeForce GPUs. 
I've only tested a single game here. This was a last minute addition to this content, but thought it was worth looking into. And it's something I don't recall seeing elsewhere. And that is a PCI Express GPU scaling benchmark. Basically what I've done here is test five tiers of Turing based GPUs at 1080p in Wolfenstein Youngblood using PCIe 3.0 times 16, times eight and times four. As you just saw, the biggest performance differences are seen at higher frame rates, and this is because bus transfers are fairly consistent per frame, regardless of the resolution, meaning the frame rate is the primary driver of PCIe bandwidth. So when comparing the Times 16 and Times 8 modes, we see little change in performance with the GTX 1660 Super and RTX 2060, which makes sense given the 2060 is roughly equivalent to the GTX 1080 in terms of performance. The RTX 2070 and 2080 saw a 6 to 7% performance boost going from times 8 to times 16, and then an 8% boost for the 2080 Ti. Now, comparing performance when going from times 4 to times 8 bandwidth, we see a 13% boost for the GTX 1660 Super, 10% for the 2060, 14% for the 2070, 19% for the 2080, and 23% for the 2080 Ti. And it's interesting to note that the jump in performance with the next gen flagship GPUs is said to be as wide as the gap between the RTX 2070 and GTX 2080 Ti. If that's true, there's a real chance based on these figures that the extra bandwidth PCIe 4.0 brings to the table will boost performance by a small margin. At the end of the day, as I said last week, I'm not banking on PCIe 4.0 delivering the goods with next gen GPUs. Our reasons for going with the 3950X extend beyond just PCIe 4.0 support, though it is certainly a nice bonus that has the potential to prove beneficial in the very near future. What I will say is, it does appear inaccurate to claim that the RTX 2082 i doesn't require at least PCI Express 3.0 times 16 bandwidth. Sure, there are some games that didn't see a difference between times 8 and times 16 bandwidth, but there are now plenty that do, and I suspect in a year or two, we'll have many more examples that we can add to the list. It was also really interesting to see the Radeon RX 5700 XT benefiting from its PCIe 4.0 support to the tune of 4 to 5% in some games. It's going to be a real problem for Intel if AMD's third gen Ryzen processors receive a 4 to 5% performance advantage with next gen GPUs. That's really all AMD needs. And in my opinion, it's possible we'll see gains that are even bigger than that. Anyway, enough guesswork for now. The data we just went over was very interesting to say the least, and I'm now even more confident in our decision to start GPU testing with the 3950X test system. As always, let me know what you thought about the testing in the comment section below. And if you wanna join the Harbor and Box community, then check out our Patreon account. The link for that is in the video description. Not only will you be directly supporting testing like this, but you'll also be getting some pretty nice perks in return, like access to our monthly live streams. We'll actually be doing one of those in a few days time. Uh, we have Q and A's, private discord chat, behind the scenes content. If you're interested, check it out. As I said, the link is in the video description. If not, that is perfectly fine though. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.